So I'm back at it again doing some maintenance on the Mercedes and I realized that I had a oil leak on the lower pan, not the upper pan, for the oil pan. Um, so I wanted to get that fixed and part of the problem was getting the oil pan off and I'm going to show you why. So I did get the lower oil pan off um, and I wish I would have had a video showing how to do it. But the one thing you do not want to do is you do not want to put a pry bar between these surfaces. The oil pan is a stamped steel and obviously this is aluminum. Um, worst thing that can happen was messing the surface up and then making sure it doesn't seal correctly and also bending the oil pan so that doesn't seal correctly. So you don't want to do that. You also don't want to break this plastic pickup. It is plastic in here. Um, even though probably it's not too bad to replace, that's something that you probably don't want to replace. So I logged into my old computer and utilized Shopkeep Pro because I didn't want to mess it up, right? Even though I've worked on cars for a while, it's still good to utilize your assets. And so it's telling me here for the low oil, oil pan, obviously what I just said, you know, do not drive any tools between cylinder case and oil pan to loosen pan, right? The seal surface will be damaged otherwise, exclamation point, very important. Um, so what it tells me to do is to get a M6 by 60 or longer to pry the, the oil pan. So when I thought about that, I was like, I don't know why I need a oil pan bolt um, or a M6 bolt. So. I went to my trusty parts bin, in which I looked for the M6, which I think the longest one I had was, um, what was it at? Uh, M6 by 50, which should be okay. So I grabbed my bolt, and it's actually pretty smart. Usually working on German cars can be harder than not, but you can see this little indention right there, and it's kind of hard to see. And I'll show you in the oil pan. You have your oil pan bolts and you have this indention. Well, here's the oil pan, as you can see, where the indention would be is right here. And if you look, you're gonna have a nut welded onto the oil pan. And so what that's gonna do is when you spin on this nut, it's actually gonna push up against the oil pan, the, the upper pan, and then it's going to separate the lower pan from the upper pan um, without having to pry it pretty much with leaving the surface of both intact without negatively affecting the uh, mounting surface. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep the surface. Um, you could use a razor, uh, but then it will take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna use this um, prepping surface wheel. Well, it is actually made of like a rubber plastic material, uh, very flexible. It's not gonna actually do any damage to the aluminum. Uh, before, before I do that, I, you probably do want to cover up that pickup tube, maybe with a rag or something to make sure you don't get any chunks of uh, old silicone in that uh, pickup tube. And as I said before, you don't have access to a compressor. You can also use a scraper um, with the handle on it or just a regular razor. Like I said, it will take more time, um, but you can still get the job done. You know, it's just gonna eat up more of your time, really. Now that you're finished prepping this surface, um, what you also wanna do is probably, you're gonna see a little bit still of the gasket maker. Um, you can use the uh, brake parts cleaner that's non-chlorinated, -chlor uh, so basically it doesn't leave a film. And you can be a little bit precise. And you can spray some of this stuff down. Um, you also want to make sure that you clean the surface. And you take a clean rag and kind of clean everything afterwards to make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. So now that I got this surface um, clean for mounting, I gotta get rid of obviously all this gunk, right? So I'm gonna use the pressure washer. I mean the I'm sorry, the parts washer. I know not many people have parts washer, but I. Um, um, at my job, obviously, um, I have access to one, so you can still use brake cleaner, but um, I'm going to use the parts washer first to get all the big point, uh, pieces out and then use the brake cleaner later. All right, so now for this one, I'm going to be using uh, Permatex Ultra Black. Um, I do know some people that only utilize Mercedes brand uh, sealant, uh, but this has worked for me for many years on many makes, on many builds, and I will continue to use this because I never have issues with it. So the path you're going to want to take is not on the outside, but it's actually on the inside. So you're gonna follow this, go inside, go around, inside, go around, and continue that path 
until you complete a complete circuit uh, around the oil pan. And here's what it should look like. Um, as you can see, the path I took um, doesn't have to be a huge bead, but just enough to make sure that when it squishes, it kind of covers a lot. Um, so I'll be putting it on there and then hand tightening the bolts and then we'll go from there. So now that I have the pan up, um, it's not torqued. Um, what I did is I hand tightened all these in a crisscross uh, criss pattern to make sure that um, it pushed the Permatex up in a fashion that was even. Um, I replaced the gasket on the oil pan uh, drain. Um, so I'm going to let this basically sit for about 45 minutes, maybe an hour, to let it kind of uh, harden. And then I'll go back with a torque wrench and torque everything down. So now that you're ready to torque the oil pan, uh, you're actually going to torque it to 14 Newton meters. Okay, this is not foot pounds, this is not inch pounds. These are Newton meters. If you torque it to 14 foot pounds or anything else, you will uh, pull the threads out of the aluminum uh, upper pan and that's a whole other story. So make sure, and I'm following this, this is going to be um, what is considered a bolt. Uh, oil pan bottom section to oil pan so basically lower oil pan to upper oil pan and it's going to be 14 newton meters which is not going to be a lot <clears throat> no, that's going to be for the um, 278 uh, if you do go up the um, m157 is pretty much going to be the same exact thing i mean the motors are extremely similar so i can see why the torque specs are also extremely similar if not the same all right so it's been the allotted time so i went ahead and torqued everything to 14 newton meters like I said, I went ahead and did a crisscross pattern just to make sure that it was even. I know there is a probably a specific pattern to do, um, but most likely it won't really matter too much as long as you uh, reach that uh, peak torque. After I did the crisscross pattern, I went ahead and went one time around just to make sure that everything did loosen up and it's torqued. Um, it is cured. Um, what they want you to do is wait 24 hours after this period to make sure that it's cured before filling up with any kind of oil. Um, I don't find that to be a necessity, um, so I uh, will put oil in the vehicle uh, and I will drive it in the next couple hours. Here's a video of it running, right, no leaks, as you can see. And this is about I don't know, maybe two hours in total, maybe an hour and a half of dry time. Uh, like I said, Permatex does say to wait 24 hours before filling up any kind of fluids, but I went ahead and filled them up prior to that because in my experience, it wasn't necessary. Uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying that's what I do for my personal car. Um, so do what you want with that information. Um, but uh, my personal car, that's what I do.